Yes, I'm Anita Human. I'm a software developer, technical writer, and a fan of open source, and also a cat lover. And these are my accounts in case you want to connect. Always ready, much available. And today I will be speaking on the topic inclusive contribution to inclusive contribution guidelines for open source projects. And um, first and foremost, what are contribution guidelines? And I define it as um, a text file that is created by project maintainers that contains guidelines and, um, on how people and new contributors should contribute to that particular project, the do's and don'ts, and how they're supposed to like, successfully carry on a pull request by the end of the day. Yes, yeah, so, but there are like common problems that I noticed from my period of um, contributing to open source from last year August up to this point. But from a beginner perspective, I noticed a few mistakes that um, always happen in open source projects. And, um, and some of these common contribution guideline problems are one, it's always too technical. Too technical in the, in the sense that let's not forget that the contribution guideline is supposed to give us a detailed breakdown of um, a particular project and uh, how to set up the project. And these guidelines are set out there for new contributors and um, people who are contributing to the project for, uh, for the first time, right? So if it happens to be too technical in the sense that there's so many technical terms and uh, as if I'm a newbie, I just heard about open source and I come out and, and I say, okay, let me try making a pull request for the first time. Since I've been given, I've been hearing a lot about open source and then I see the documentation. Contribution guidelines are like too technical. I don't know the terms there. How do I even understand what this project is about? And there's this general idea that will come to my mind as um, a new contributor. This project is not for you. It is for somebody that has close to four to five years experience because these kind of terms, I don't think a newbie with very little um, expertise like me would be able to contribute to this particular project. And um, another problem is um, there's not enough details. Yes, documentations are like have like so much writings. You have to do this, you have to do that, but it doesn't contain like the major details that actually put somebody through. Does he have the step to step guidelines okay you have to make a pull request go to this point click on this button do this okay how to set up the dependencies you have to do this particular thing okay this project needs this particular framework to run on your particular system does it have this um, guidelines that i already stated there or is there an assumption that a contributor should be aware that yes yeah, this project uses this particular framework and then she just hop on it it's one of the problems I notice, and um, another problem is uh, not usually interactive. A lot of persons have difficulties learning with just documentations. And um, if you're putting up a guideline and a step-by-step -step demo on how to set up a particular project on my own device, at, at least it should have like a demo or a short video or maybe an audio recording that I could like listen to or watch and see how it is done. That way it will ease me the stress, but I've not actually come across any contribution guidelines that are usually this interactive. And um, there are very few open source projects that um, actually make contribution guidelines interactive. And um, it's difficult to assess. It is a contribution guideline let us not forget and it is supposed to be the main thing that uh, a new contributor sees once he comes onto that repository six four pages looking for contribution guidelines and then asking questions for from every team member just to just to know where I can find the contribution guidelines, the do's and don'ts, and a, a particular guide, um, contribution guidelines. And uh, it is always 
hard to read. Hard to read in the sense that like it is so congested with information that you always miss the the very particular points that you are supposed to take note of. Like there's so many informations. I know that these things are very important, but then the vital information is like if you don't install this particular framework, then this project will not run on your system. Or if you don't have this particular software on your system, then this project is not going to run from your own end. These are things that should be stated out there, like because they're very important. I mean, everybody should know that, yes, these are key points. If I don't do this, then my project will not work. Uh, yeah, and um, yes, I'd like to share my experience as a beginner. So I, as I said, I started um, contributing to open source sometime in August. And uh, as a first time contributor, and I think I was like just four months into um, web development as a whole. So I I was eager to contribute because I, I always see people post on Twitter, oh, I just got, um, my pull request just got accepted, help me celebrate. And people are always so excited. And I'm like, okay, I have to give this a try. I mean. If people are really excited about this and it's worth doing, I should give it a try also. And then I came up across an, an open source project. The issue, the issue was a very minor issue. Like it, it's a, so just a documentation, but I had to like do a translation. Now, for us, for a person who is like new to open source and programming as a whole, I didn't understand like a lot of technical terms and. And I was reading through the README because I contacted somebody from the the project and I'm like, okay, I want to go about this, but I can't actually figure out my way around. And this is my first time. And they said I should check the README and the documentation. Everything is there in the documentation. Yes, I've gone through the documentation and I'm not seeing the important key point. What problem am I fixing? And I'm trying to get this thing. I don't know. How, I don't. I didn't even know how to set up how to fuck the repository or clone it. I didn't know how to do none of that. It took me approximately two weeks to fix that particular issue. And <laughs> the sad thing is that I wasn't able to fix it. Yeah, because I didn't get like, I was. I got frustrated with the whole running about, contacted different persons. And because I didn't know how else to explain my situation to somebody, I'm like, okay, this is the challenge I'm, I'm facing. And um, because of, this particular thing, I've not been able to contribute. My pull request is not going to. I didn't know how to explain this to somebody. They're like, technical terms are not even there. If I try to explain to somebody, they're like, just check the documentation. It should be there. Every uh, open source project has documentation that has everything written there. But I couldn't just navigate around it. And that was a big problem for me. I, I ended up not fixing the issues so assigned to somebody else. But a few weeks after, I was able to like go over other projects and I saw the, the whole process of how to fuck, how to clone and then make the changes and then push back to the repository. And I, I realized that the issue I was actually breaking heads for was just something I would have done in a few minutes, but because of a, a tiny mistake, I kept having issues. And this was another thing that gave me big time issues. I. I was so frustrated, but um, that is my short story. And then coming from a view of um, a first time contributor, I think you understand how it feels when you come to a repository and you're lost. You don't know how to go about the contribution guidelines are not clearly stated out and telling you what to do with, what not to do, and which step you should take the next. And um, that is just my story. And uh, Yes, um, why should we improve contribution guidelines? And if, because um, the first time contributors can be a code maintainer tomorrow. Now, open source is based on um, contributors, yeah. And so the contributor should be like the key factor. And if I come into a project as a contributor and I'm, I'm not able to find my way around, I would definitely abandon that project. I wouldn't want to go there again because I'm like, ah. That project, I would have loved to contribute to it, but as it stands, I don't really understand the kind of terms they're using. I don't understand how the processes are done. It's, I generally get confused in this particular project, so I think I will just keep.
that's that's the way i would put it because i wouldn't want to go through the stress i went through on the first day for any project again and i wouldn't want anybody to experience that i'm sure that's how a new a new beginner would feel if he doesn't get the, um the right contribution guidelines and um another way is to make a, a welcoming environment make it um if we have a stated out contribution guidelines it makes the, the contributors to be, to feel like yeah this this project feels like it's actually convenient for me to be here if i they feel like they actually understand that i am new i feel like they understand that i am new to this project and i need proper guidelines i mean if somebody can actually take out their time and document how to go about contributing as step to step as this then i, I mean they care about the contributors and i always i always want to stick around a particular project and then yes another reason is for sake of references if i one thing about me as a contributor if i see an issue in a particular project and then fixing it was not so difficult i always prepare somebody and i'm like yes if you want to contribute to open source this project is the best it's the, it's the right place for you because they're welcoming and everything is uh, very friendly for beginners so if you're a beginner and you're looking for open source project then you should start here and um i don't think it's only for me i i, I mean there are lots of persons that will actually do that reference and so for six of references and um, contribution guidelines should be properly documented. And um, how can we achieve an, an inclusive contribution guideline? Yeah, the first step I wrote out to help in achieving um, proper contribution guidelines is uh, to translate documentation into various languages. Uh, uh, some time ago, I was contributing to a particular open source project. That was during uh, Hacktober Fest. And I had this issue and it says translate to German. And for a moment, I, I stopped to ask myself, why are they translating their contribution guidelines to German? I mean, they, they should know that everybody across the world is going to have access to this particular repository and we want to go over the contribution guidelines but then what is their main reason so i asked um, the person in charge the maintainer of that particular project and the reasons i got made sense to an extent they said most of their contributors are like german so they have to make a convenient environment for them to contribute then so it won't be so difficult you have to translate to german before you actually understand what you're contributing to but they seem to forget that I'm not German, and I'm sure other people too, they're not German. There's so many people that are not actually German right now, and we're coming to this particular project. It's hard to first. Everyone is eager to fix an issue. But what are people who are not actually German? I, I, if um, the documentation is translated into various languages, or there is um, a way to get translations into any language of a choice, depending on where the contributor is actually based or coming from, then it will make a lot of um, sense. And another one is uh, to make tutorials on project setup. Sorry. Yeah. Every open source pro project, if you ask me, you should consider including screencasts and um, recordings and um, short videos on how to actually contribute to particular project setup like in in particular organization there should be somebody one of the code maintainers who are like very grounded in that particular thing who will be willing to do a step-by-step -step guide on how to get along on that particular project on the setup and how to finally arrive to a, a good pull request that could merge immediately and this would really be helpful to a contributor because a lot of persons actually relate better with um, videos and um, demos than just reading through documentations and because definitely you miss a point and at that point when you miss a point how do you how do you reframe, reframe yourself how do you go back to the point where you actually made a mistake if you're not like very aware of what you're doing another way that i wrote to improve contribution guidelines to avoid too many technical terms. Let us bear in mind that 
we are looking for new contributors or even contributors to that particular repository that are not very grounded on that particular thing. And if the documentation and the contribution guidelines are too technical for someone with basic knowledge about open source or open source projects at all to understand, then it's very difficult for contributors to actually make, make attempts on how to like contribute to that particular project. So the technical terms should be made very friendly and um, broken down into like very, very basic terms that anybody, even somebody who has like the least knowledge about open source could read about a particular contribution guideline and set up a particular project without having to Google each term after each line you read, you Google a term, after each line you read, you Google a term. This will really save a lot of um headaches for new contributors and um another point i wrote out is um, to make contribution guidelines obvious it is a contribution guidelines can can it just be like the first thing i see when i come into a project because i wouldn't want to start looking for where to to see a contribution guideline like the way i did in my own time going from page to page asking questions on from one uh, member to the other how can you do this can you schedule a meeting list so that you can show me how to go about um, the contribution i mean it should be very obvious in the read me that yes the contribution guidelines i hear for somebody who is new to this particular project and another is um we should build a bridge and by building a bridge i mean we should um we should set up um, a code of conduct for members of the community. This is because, yes, everyone has like self control, but not all the time. The times when you get very furious, either by a, a particular event that trigger the anger or another one, and then you, when you decline a review or anything as a member of the community, you might you might just be harsh to the next person without even know, knowing it. And this always goes on. I mean, we're humans, and it's very easy for us to flare up at any point in time. But if we build a bridge and um, setting up code of conduct, then people will always have the to instill a sense of um, proper behavioral attitude for each member, such that they have this. Uh, they actually reply to the underrepresented members of the community as um, in the most friendly way when it comes to and using some foul words or harsh words towards people when they ask questions would be, would be avoided. And um, another is um, to ensure that the guidelines contain complete information. Is there any detail that is left hanging from that particular contribution guideline? I mean, you should have from the first step of um, coming into the repository down to the point where the pull request is merged and um, your sent the congratulations, your pull request has been merged. This step-by-step -step guide should be documented in the contribution guidelines so that even if I I have very little basic knowledge about contributing to open source, I will be able to um, follow the guidelines and uh, complete the whole contribution process without having any issues. And um, if if in case where like there are other issues like which particular code what i contribute is it code base or is it um, documentation or is it uh, design then all this the information should be stated in the uh, contribution guidelines and uh, it should specify how you can reach for help and in a case where uh you you reach the hard end and you don't know what else to do, you don't know which ne which step to go next, then the contribution guidelines should um, specify that, yes, in case of confusion or if you get lost, then you can reach out to this person or contact this person for assistance, you get? This would help contributors know that, yes, um, even if, um, like, unaware of what I'm doing. The, con the community is willing to help me and um, it will be a big deal for me to actually want to reach out to somebody that has more knowledge on that particular 
open source project. And uh, also, it should be uh, welcoming to everyone. This is because a lot of projects, when when it comes to open source contribution, they they always keep the parts where they have to include that designers and then write technical writers are welcome. What if I'm not like code inclined? What if I have very little ideas about anything code based? And I want to just design on that particular open source project, or I want to just write the documentation. The contribution guidelines should include each and every single member that could possibly want to contribute, regardless of um, their particular listen, skill. So it should be welcoming to every skill set, whatsoever it may be. It, stating that, yes, designers, if you ha will have to contribute design issues, this is where you look for them. There could be repositories that are set out for designers, only for designers, and then maybe uh, documentation issues also. Okay, if you're a technical writer and you want to help in the documentation, this uh, particular, um, this is the site where you find all the documentation, all the documentation that you could contribute to. And um, this is a way of making, making contribution guidelines more inclusive and um, welcoming to everybody. Yes, and um, that being said, thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for listening. And um, I really hope that every open source project begins to see things from the, the beginners beginner's view also and not only from the expert aspect and I mean everyone should reason that yes what if this is my first time contributing and this contribution guidelines are they like detailed enough for me to get started with this particular project you should always have every contributor in mind because they are like the backbone of every open source project thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for listening and I'll take any questions if there are any Anita, thank you so much for the talk. You're, you're getting some some heart reactions uh, at the end of your talk there. And I think uh, I could speak for everybody when, so I work, uh, have worked on open source projects and I think your your list, your manifesto in a way of what makes a good uh, <laughs> contribution guide that I think is fantastic. Oh so, thank that, you. That makes uh, me so happy. I was, well, I was you too should be to actually give the talk. <laughs> I think I think you did just fine. Uh, I'm really curious um, from the experience that you've had as a beginner, have you come across any open source projects that you have found to be particularly good or matching with some of the things that you wish they had, like some standout yes, project that yes. you found um, good? Recently this year, the, every open source project that I have decided to contribute to clearly states out the contribution guidelines. And I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Finally, somebody is doing something that everybody should actually look up to. Because imagine actually coming, going through the, the hell I went through, two weeks of fixing just one issue, and I couldn't do it. Can you, na can you name some of them? Just for people yes, to look at, maybe um, if they want to see. Yes, and the layer five issue, the layer mm -hmm. five repositories are like so detailed, like, the community is welcoming aside that, but then they clearly state out the documentation so that everybody can get along. And if you're having issues, they always refer you to like the maintainers and people that will always work it through if you're having issues and you're like a contributor for the first time. Also, um, Chaos is another community that, oh, they're so generous when it comes to helping new time contributors. And um, Genome projects are also setting out the documentation and the contribution guidelines, which is really helpful. I'm like so happy because I've been willing to contribute code base, but um, I've not been able to in that particular line because I didn't know how to, but now I can finally do that and I'm really happy about it. And uh, I think there's several others, but I can't mention everyone right now. Eh? But um, the few that I've mentioned, yes, the contribution guidelines are like really, really friendly. It makes me want to keep contributing to this project because I feel like they have their contributors in at heart when it comes comes to the community. Uh, yeah, this is this is all a very good perspective. There's a few comments uh, in the chat right now saying uh, they agree, they appreciate your your perspective, especially for a newcomer. 
you know, getting people started in, in project is, is very important. Uh, great oh, reminders. Okay. Yeah. So check out the chat later. Um, don't know if there's any other questions out there. I have one more if no one else. So I'll add one. Uh, while we wait okay. for any others to come in, I'm curious about in okay. these. You, you mentioned interactivity, so being able to like watch a video, which you know I'm a very visual yeah. learner, so I appreciate that as well. I'm wondering if interactive help. Are there channels that you have found to be particularly useful, whether it's Gitter or IRC or Slack or whatever, um, like means to interact with people in that way? Have you found some to be better than others? Yes, um, Slack is friendly, like. Slack is a, it's a way to interact with your contributors, but um, interactiveness, what I actually meant in that aspect was um, creating demos and um, videos that are like, maybe vi YouTube videos, it could be like two minutes or three minutes. It doesn't matter the length, so long as it gives every step-by-step -step details that you could actually use to like get started in that particular project. I'm sure every contributor would really appreciate the time taken out to make that project and it's really help people and it's go a long way because their videos and everyone can actually refer to them at any point in time if they're having challenges so that's um the interactiveness i was talking about that sounds great i know one thing that was mentioned and something that i've definitely felt as well is your idea of uh not too much technical jargon or at least being able to explain it so people understand if you're working in a project what does a particular term Yes, a project. It's super I, I have had to Google several times. I've had to Google like a, a, a sentence word to word just to make sure I understand that. Yeah, this is what this, this term is talking about. And <laughs> it gets funny sometimes, but it helps with the vocabulary. But then uh, it gets stressful sometimes. You don't have to Google everything. It should be made easy. I think this is a great list. So. Anita, thank you so much for your talk. We appreciate it. I think the audience uh, took a lot out of it and definitely have some, some work to do on their own contribution guidelines. Uh, okay. So thank you thank for that. You.